This is your one and only Firespark81 with your daily dose of video goodness and with only two days left until the release of Atlas I wanted to make a one more video showing some more information that I found and some more information that they've given us as well as talking about managing your expectations for the game. So let's get to it. If we pop on over here to Twitter, you can see that on December 16th, they released a little teaser trailer for the game called The Ultimate Showdown. So that's the first thing we're going to take a look at here. All right, so you have a guy, he's frozen, he throws a knife, it flies straight up in the air. Slowly, they got that old slow-mo going on there. And then lands in front of the other guy who's holding a cutlass. And then he switches to a knife, performs a little chuckle emote, and then that's it. So there's just a little bit of stuff that we can pull from this, not too much because it's very short. First off is this guy here. Notice the outfit that he's wearing and then we go to this guy here. Notice the outfit that he's wearing. So we have two different outfits. This looks more similar to like what the fleet admirals for Europe wore back in that time period. So he could be considered, I guess, the good guy if, if you want to put it that way. And then this guy here is obviously a pirate with pirates behind him so that leads you to wonder if there's going to be factions possibly maybe i don't know we'll have to wait and see the other thing is is you're obviously going to be able to throw a knife and we'll get more into that when we talk about combat but one thing i want to point out here and a lot of people pointing this out in the comments for it and other stuff is that notice that he's looking straight ahead and throws straight up in the air so that's, we're going to talk about that a little more when it comes to managing your expectations for the game. Because remember, this game is early access. So obviously, the person piloting this character is looking up. They would have to be looking up to throw the knife straight up. And you can see that the knife does indeed fly straight up in the air. Their head is not tilted back and looking up which we do have articulated heads in arc. You look up, your character looks up, you look left and they look left and right. And they look right. They may not have that in this game yet. So you may not know where they're aiming when you are fighting against someone, which is kind of good to know information to know whether they're looking at you. Do they see you? You don't know because you can't see where they're seeing by where their head is looking. So that's, that's something to keep in mind there. So he throws straight up and then it, you know, flies up, blah, 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 and then lands down. Notice that the animation, or I should say the modeling, looks really good. Let's see if we can skip back here and I can find that exact spot. I mean, that knife looks amazing. It being stuck in there just looks good. Another thing I want to point out is the clipping. There is massive. Look at that. Like, that's just terrible. His his hand is basically inside of his stomach. Once again, we'll we'll come back to that, but that's... Yeah, I noticed that like right from the get-go. His hand just completely disappeared inside of his outfit there. Love the different character designs though. We got a bunch, everything from big old chunky guy to really skinny scrawny girl. And if we, if we back up just a little bit here to where they are walking in, you can see this guy's arms are completely different. And we're going to talk about that here in a, in a bit too. So that's about it for that. I'm not going to waste any more time on this for now. We're going to go back and look at some other tweets that they've uh, shown and some more images. All right. So back here on Twitter, we have another image here. A pirate raiding party engages in heated combat aboard a royal galleon seeking to commandeer the enemy ship as an onlooker prepares to grab over so we're gonna get the ability to grapple and swing over to other ships and that that is fantastic for a lot of reasons because if we can grapple onto other ships that means we may have the capability to grapple onto terrain and climb up different areas and stuff like that just the having the ability to grapple to get to places is absolutely fantastic i can imagine like swinging through a canyon like i don't know spider-man or some shenanigans it's just the idea is fantastic to me but there's a little bit we can pull from this so we're going to take a zoomed in look at it here all right, so here we are on the image, and the first thing I noticed from this is this over here. Look at this. This appears to be 
either a hide tanning station or a bathing station. This is obviously a large brass or wooden tub, but it's kind of similar shape to what may have been used as a bathtub. So you may have to keep your characters clean. And that's that's a definite possibility because in an interview with, I don't remember, I'll point it out when I get to it, but an interview with a website, they talk about having to uh, uh, make sure you pay attention to what you eat and keeping up your vitamins. Uh, apparently scurvy is going to be a thing. So keeping your character clean may also be a thing. And we know that you are going to age as well. So this whole bathing process may come into the aging mechanic and may keep you younger longer. I mean, who knows? Who knows? There's so much about this game and so much that uh, they've told us about this game that it just makes me wonder how deep this thing goes. But you can see there's a lot of fighting going on here uh, a lot of guns being fired melee combat definitely going to be a huge part of this and then i love this person here just just watching you know your ship's under attack and they're just sitting there hanging out but the grappling hook looks amazing and you can see there's a smaller ship over here so it looks like three different size ships because they're much higher than this ship here so this ship is uh, obviously way higher than this ship and which means it's much larger than this ship and then in the background, we have another smaller ship there that has a lot less on the deck than this one does. You can see there's just crates all over the place here, all over. You got to wonder if this is water storage or rum storage here in this station here because we have barrels. There's barrels here and here. So they could be, these barrels could be normal storage barrels for whatever, you know, shenanigans you want to put in there. These could be more liquid type situation. But this here really intrigued me because it's covered in hides. It could be a hide station or a tanning station or it could be a bathing station. I, I I find it strange that a bathing station would just be front and center on the deck like that. It's more than likely a hide station, but who knows? Let me know what you think it is down in the comments. Then back on Twitter, we have another photo and they posted a link to SoundCloud for some of the theme music, but we're going to look more at this photo. You can go, I'll put the link down in the description or you can go to their Twitter and check out the music if you want to. This one's captioned, Navigating the Jungle River Rapids on a rickety raft, an adventurous explorer spots some of the region's wildlife, including giraffes, elephants, rhinos, and tigers, among others. And they say, and for our music-loving pathfinders with the link. So let's take a closer look at this photo. All right, here we are with the photo. So they say others. I noticed right from the get-go, here's the giraffe, here's the rhino. Although the rhino seems to be, I don't know, that's a weird looking rhino to me. Like, do you notice this on its back? Like, it's almost like it's covered in scales or I don't know. It's very strange. It could just be the lighting, but it's definitely that's the rhino. And then over here we have the tiger. So in a previous uh, video that I did for this, I said that there was probably going to be tigers because there was a shape in one of the images that looked very cat like. So we're definitely getting tigers back here. You can see the elephant. That's pretty much all I saw in this. We have the raft here, which is obviously lit somehow, I guess, or maybe that's just the sun shining on it. Not really sure there, but they got just a little bit of stuff there. So that's pretty Probably what you're going to start off with is something like that, just a little riggedy raft to explore around. But that's pretty much all I saw in this photo. If you've seen this photo and you spotted something that I missed, let me know. I know you all did in the previous uh, videos that I've done for this. So yeah, that's pretty much all there is for that one. Last photo we're going to take a look at is captioned, a lieutenant frantically attempts to put out a deck fire after a liquid flame attack interesting liquid flame attack i don't even know or was it from fire arrows so it could have been from the dragon could have been from fire arrows that's cool that we're going to be able to set ships on fire or perhaps the drake overhead so okay wait a minute here so we have liquid flame attack or fire arrows or the drake so obviously the liquid flame attack might be an attack that we have the capability of doing which is interesting then it goes on to read uh, buckets can be used to douse fire bail out a sinking ship transfer between containers its use is varying by salt water or fresh water very interesting all right so let's jump into the photo and take a look and see what we can pull from it okay so first off obviously we have the drake up there flying 
flying. I don't see anybody riding the Drake. Many people have been speculating that you're going to be able to ride them, although I don't see anybody riding them. However, he it would the person may be covered up by the wing you may set back here. I would expect you would set closer to the neck, but maybe they're setting back here. We got a guy running with a sword. Obviously, there's cannons firing at this ship. You can see wood chunks or chips or whatever being flung all over lots of smoke the fire looks pretty good the water looks amazing we got different kinds of containers this is a very interesting container it has like slots on the side and it appears to be open i don't know what you would keep in there maybe a live small live animal or something could be for transporting chickens and smaller smaller game maybe i don't know that's a pretty interesting find there i it's very strange container these are obviously just normal trunks or chests or what have you we got another ship there in the background there's really it's really not a lot to pull from that ship it just looks like a normal ship i don't see anybody on the top of it at all the dragon looks really good the dragon looks fantastic i love the texture on it looks absolutely amazing some wood chunks there that appears to be just about it for this one just a little bit of a just another teaser oh there's some actual there's some wood chips here as well yeah they're definitely hit getting hit with some cannon fire yeah that's pretty much all i see for this one let me know if there's anything i missed down in the comments section all right so now i want to talk about a bunch of the info that was given to us through interviews that these other websites have done and it's a lot they're they gave away a ton of information in these, but I'm going to put links to all of these articles down in the description. Please go read them all. I'm only covering parts of these articles that I thought were the most interesting. So if you want, I mean, there's a ton of information that I'm leaving out that, that just little bits here and there. They do repeat a lot of the same info, but there's, there's a ton more than I can put in one video. Okay, so the first one we're gonna take a look at here is by Variety. And it says, we have different sizes of land masses, like tiny islets, medium and very large islands. Rap I'm not even going to try to pronounce these people's last names. You know who they are, said. You might have an island the size of an ARC server. And moving around the world in between those islands is not something that's easy to do. Sailing wears down your ship. You also have your crew and your crew needs to and that's it's just neat, but they mean eat. It's a mistype on their on the uh, vanity's part. Non-player characters you have to pay with gold. Don't take care of them, and they might mutiny. So we know there is the option for the AI to mutiny, which is interesting if you don't take care of them. But the the biggest thing I pulled from this is that ships are going to wear down. So your entire ship is going to have durability that you're going to have to keep up, and you're going to have to constantly repair your ship i imagine the bigger the ship i would assume the less often you have to repair it but they could go the other way assuming that the larger ships are going to have bigger companies taking care of them so it should be easier for them to perform the maintenance on it i don't know but that i thought that was extremely interesting that you're going to have to repair your ship just by having it out using it on the open ocean is going to wear it down let me know how you feel about that in the comments this this one I thought was good for everybody to know because it says while the game is based on a, a single server concept, the developers plan to launch Atlas with a server in North America and another in Europe for latency reasons. So we knew that they were going to release servers in the like major areas, but to start off with, we're only getting North American and Europe servers. That's it. If you're if you're really far from either one of those, it's going to kind of suck for you, but hopefully hopefully the latency and the and the net code won't be too terrible and most people won't get too much lag. I really hope that the connections are good. If I'm constantly rubber banding and the servers are trash, it's going to be a nightmare. So 
that's that's a problem we may face. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But I just wanted to put this one in there because I thought it was really uh, important for people to know that we're only getting North American and Europe servers. We got another one here from the Vanity article. It says the game will feel and play a lot like Ark. He added it's made from the same DNA. So there's a lot of stuff in there from Ark, like the building mechanics and unlocking new things you can do. So I assume that they're talking about the Ingrams, how we unlock the capability to make and build new things using the Ingrams. There's probably going to be a similar system to that. Uh, and the build mechanics are going to be similar to Ark's build mechanics. Hopefully they have an auto queue mechanic to auto queue up the next piece that you're placing so you're not tapping a button every time you want to place a single chunk of wall. But that leads us into our next one here, which is overhauled building systems include automatic foundation elevation adjustment, dynamic tile swapping, improved snap detection and previewing, integrated plumbing systems. So we're going to have plumbing. That's 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 really good information to know right there per pixel paintable everything so everything is going to be covered and you know what i'm not even going to say we're going to call it rocket ship everything is going to you know you know if they let us draw whatever we want on whatever we want there are going to be so many rocket ships drawn everywhere it's going to be hilarious but i thought that was cool really that's really fan per pixel painting on everything so they're just going to give us give us the ability it's probably going to be similar to how we paint now in arc on the canvases and stuff but that's still pretty cool that we can do that on everything Beasts of Burden harness attachments for field gun and carriages. So we've seen images of carriages already and much more. Survival systems include, among other things, vitamins, benefits, and deficiencies with recipes, cooking skills, and varying ingredient qualities. So that was what I was talking about beforehand in the previous image that where they talk about you're going to have to pay attention to your vitamins. So yeah, I feel just scurvy just coming on like crazy i mean that was that was a thing so it's kind of cool that they added it and i wondered if that was going to be a thing if you're going to have to worry about deficiencies and stuff like that and how involved the cooking is going to be so i'm really excited to see how all of that plays out i wonder if it's going to be as in-depth as scum's vitamin system or a little easier to go with you know just eat a varied diet and you're good to go i don't know in the same article they talk more about the uh, combat and how it's going to play out so it says and the game isn't just about sailing it's also built out with a robust melee system that includes parries blocks and dodges character motion shields stunning strikes attacks and a slew of weapons so that tells us the combat's going to be much more than what I expected it to be. I expected you slash and the other person has a chance to block. I did not expect it to be as in-depth as what they are saying that it's in-depth here. That's really cool. So I imagine a lot of like rolling around and dodging and more on lines with uh, Conan Exiles combat. So uh, yeah, that's going to be fantastic. I said it once and I'll say it again. The combat is going to play a lot into this. If the combat's good, people are going to love that and it's going to keep a lot of people People entertained this I thought is absolutely a fantastic idea to do and I'm so happy that they're doing it top spheres of influence on the Atlas are visualized in real time at the playatlas.com design your own custom flags per pixel once again per pixel and apply them to your claims to become famous or infamous so they say apply them to your claim. So I'm wondering if they're going to use, if you're going to have like your banner, your flag or whatever you design it, and then you use that as a land claiming system. It'll be interesting if that claims a chunk of land as opposed to how ARC does it now where you just place down foundation and you have a little bit of that area. So this kind of hints to placing down a flag and claiming a chunk of land. But what I thought was really fantastic is they say top spheres of influence are going to show up on playatlas.com on a real-time map. Now, what they mean by that, and they mention this, they go into a little more depth in another article uh, that'll be linked below once again, and this one as well. The largest companies and the people who have the most claim land and have the most power are going to show up 
on the map. So everybody's going to know where you are. So they'll be able to come to you and join you or attack you. That's a fantastic idea and I'm glad they're doing it because that's going to help keep these large mega clans or mega companies under control or help them grow. Who knows? Who knows at this point? But I'm hoping that it helps keep them under control because if you want to stay hidden, you're going to want to not get too big. I'm not going to try to pronounce his last name. It says Atlas will likely be in early access for two years or longer. It will not have any paid DLC or expansions because the world of Atlas is obviously going to grow, but it should grow for everybody. I love that they're not going to do any DLCs or expansions. Once you buy it, you have it, you have access to all of it. You will continue to have access to all of it for as long as it's going. To help cover the cost of development though, Atlas will eventually add cosmetic microtransactions before leaving early access. Okay, so before leaving early access, we're going to have microtransactions. I mean, you kind of got to expect that that was going to be a thing because everybody's adding cosmetic microtransaction these days and they have to have some way to continue to fund the servers. I mean, the servers just don't get hosted for free and it's going to get to a point where sales really start to drop off and that money's going to start to dwindle away and they're going to need to be able to fund and keep funding and paying for the people, you know, to pay the people to keep making the game. The idea at this time is that players will be able to buy outfits and decorations, but in-game methods will be available to grind for these items. So we're going to have ways to grind for whatever. Probably they'll probably introduce some type of currency that you use to buy the stuff and we'll have ways to grind for it. Although Atlas will only cost $30 right now, it will, will eventually cost $60 when it leaves early access. So buy the game before it leaves early access. I imagine that it's going to go on sale multiple times. They'll probably make a bunch of different pushes just like they did with Ark where it was on Humble for like 12 bucks and there was plenty of times that it went for free so you could try it out and see if you wanted it or not. Take advantage of that now. Don't wait until it's $60 and then complain. It's $60. You're going to have plenty of time to buy it at 30 or probably I can almost guarantee you for cheaper than 30. Now remember I said we were going to talk more about the character creation and we're going to do that now. So in the Tech Advisor article they said there is a vast character creation system at play in which Studio Wildcard claims you can accurately recreate any real world person in game. And then they go on to state that that's a bold claim and one will be putting to the test once we get some time with Atlas. So. Apparently, we're going to have a crazy in-depth character creation system. I cannot wait to see how that plays out because that is always a fun part for me. I spend upwards of an hour sometimes in character creators just getting my character looking perfect. So I can't wait for that feature and I cannot wait to see how in-depth it is. They say that you can accurately, notice accurately recreate any real world person in game. I can't wait. I can't wait. Okay, so there's one more little thing that I want to touch on in the Variety article. They also talk about custom servers, so we're going to take a look at that real quick, and then we're going to talk about managing expectations because there's a lot of different information that they give in these interviews that varies from what they say from interview to interview. So this little part that I pulled out from the Variety interview talks about custom servers and it says powerful mod and server functionalities. Want to build a World War II Spitfire or a flying fortress bomber with fully walkable interior and gun stations that carries troops loaded with machine guns and rocket launchers? How about a tank and aircraft carrier to play out the Battle of Midway on an expansive scale? How about an Arcadian steampunk airship floating through a cloud world? These examples and much more 
are provided in the Atlas dev kit where you can effectively make whatever large scale MMO action game you want to see happen, all supported by the database driven network technology that powers Atlas. Unofficial Atlas can be of any size and configuration while a visual map tool lets server hosts lay out their own complete world of islands, continents, terrain features, spawns, resources, hazards, underwater zones, dynamic weather, biome configuration, and ecologies. There is an infinite number of other configurable features, all dynamically streamed to the client. There is so much there, so much there. So essentially, you're going to have full control over your own custom server. Now, I wondered about this because they state in one of these articles that the Atlas map is a bunch of smaller maps stitched together and you're going to bounce from one to the other, similar to how you do in EVE Online, except you won't have a loading. They've somehow figured out how to do seamless loading, which I guess is somewhat easy considering most of it's open ocean. It's, it's easy for them to render, so it's quick load times. That combined with what they say here gives us so much information about how the the individual custom uh un or I should say unofficial atlas servers can be run. I mean you can play on officials then go to an unofficial atlas and have a completely different experience. Far more different than the experience that you have from going from official arc to an unofficial arc server. I mean, yeah, mods add a little bit of variety gameplay, but this allows you apparently to customize the entire game experience. That's that's amazing. That alone is going to add so much more value into your playtime. I mean, you get bored on officials, go jump on any unofficial and you could have a completely different experience. Not to mention once the dev kit gets released and people start just making total conversions. I can't wait. That is going to be amazing. I can't wait to see how that plays out. Okay, now that I've built the hype, let's talk about managing your expectations and let me kill a little bit of that hype for you. Okay, so this first little snippet comes from an interview from PC Gamer. Once again, will be linked down below if you want to read the whole thing. It says, when players first start a new character, they will spawn into one of a few Freeport towns that doubles as a safe zone so they can learn the ropes and build a ship without immediately being blown up. Make no mistake though, Atlas is a sandbox MMO in the true sense that there is little in the way of linear story that players must follow. Wildcard Studio co-founder Jeremy, not going to pronounce his last name, tells me that there is a main quest that involves traveling the entire scope of the world to collect nine artifacts and bring them to the center of the map where players can fight an enormous sea demon aboard their ship. So I think that's what we saw in the trailer, that giant kraken looking octopus thing is probably what th what this refers to. Just don't expect to roll into villages and see dozens of golden check marks adorned the heads of its residents. We're not, and then it says in quotes, so this is Jeremy speaking, we're not going to beat Blizzard in terms of making content. We are not the kings of making content. I'd rather focus on our capabilities of building systems, both gameplay systems and systems for players to own the world themselves. This leads you to believe there's going to be kind of like a over gameplay quest that you're just going to do, but not really you're not going to go to somebody and obtain the quest. You're just going to know you need to do it. And it's going to play out as a quest without actually like, hey, go get this for me. And then you bring it back to the person and and that leads you through the questing system. That's what this kind of leads you to believe. Now, let's take a look at what they say in another article. Now, in a GameSpot article, they say... You can play Atlas in both first and third person and the MMO side means that there will be quests and objectives for you to complete 
I'm not going to pronounce his last name, says. So the, once again, this is the director saying two different things. He says there's going to be quests and objectives, but over here he says that we're not really going to do all that, but there's going to be an overarching quest more or less. And then we go on to another article with Tech Advisor. Once again, all these will be linked down below. I can't state that enough. Unlike Ark Survival Evolved, Atlas has a full quest system complete with subquests, procedurally generated treasure maps, and challenge zones, giving you some direction in a vast open world. We've got big hopes about the quest line and hope that it isn't solely comprised of fetch quests. Only time will tell. So in this interview, they state something completely different. In this interview, there's going to be sub quests and big quests and all this other stuff. And it leads you to believe that it's going to play out more like World of Warcraft. This is what I mean about managing your expectations. They're saying a lot of different things and trying to like really build the hype. But when it comes down to it, we don't really know until we actually get into the game. OK, and then this last one, this this really drives home the point that I'm I'm trying to make with all of this and that is go into this understanding that it's early access go into this understanding that there's going to be a lot of bugs there it's going to be glitchy there's going to be a lot of stupid stuff going on realize that this is a very early access game in an article with GameSpot it goes on to read here there are lots of other systems at play in Atlas so much so that it seems nearly impossible to balance it all. So right there, right there, that is the director of the game stating that we're probably not going to be able to balance this game completely. I mean, I don't know what else to say. Think about that. Just let that mull around in your head. Hold on, I'll give you a second. Okay, you good? You thought about it? All right, let's read the rest of this. That's what early access is for. And then he laughs. You get the best testing and balancing feedback you could ever have when you have hundreds of thousands of people telling you their opinion. You just have to find a way to kind of synthesize that into some actual outcome, but it's very useful and it's the only way to do it. You're a tester for this game. You have to realize when you when you buy an early access game, and this is indeed an early access game, you are the beta tester for them. Remember that. If you are hesitant at all about this game, don't buy it day one. Trust me when I say they are going to hand out an astronomical amount of keys to YouTubers and streamers, and they're going to be playing it day one. And you're going to get to see plenty of aspects of the game, and you're going to get an idea of whether you want to buy it or not. You have no reason to jump the gun and buy this game if you're even slightly on the fence about it. It's going to be extremely easy for you to get an idea of whether this is something you want to invest your money in right from the get go. OK, let's take I want to look at one more thing in this video and I want to point out a couple more things and talk about some things that I touched on already. Now, when I talk about the state of this game, I, I'm going to talk about and point out what I pointed out when we first watched this. This dude is looking straight forward and throwing that knife straight in the air. That right there gives you an idea about where this game is at in development. I have a feeling a lot of systems are in place, but that's it. A lot of systems are in place. There's still obviously a lot for them to do. What they are doing now is they are building the hype because they want those day one sales. They want as much day one sales as possible. And then uh, what they'll do is they'll drop it down in price, get additional sales. They're going to give out a ton of keys like they do because they're smart, because they know you'll watch your favorite YouTuber or that you'll watch your favorite streamer. And then you will see an aspect of the game you like, maybe the shipbuilding spot on, maybe the uh, combat is spot on and you think that looks really fun. And then you're going to see how much fun the YouTuber or the streamer is having. And then you're going to run and buy the game. Their marketing department is intelligent. Don't let them make your decisions for you, I guess, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And then the other thing I want to point out, which I pointed out again, is the hand clipping. I mean, this shows where the polish is currently in the game. Now, I don't expect it to be polished don't get me wrong because a lot of people are going to berate me in the comments and be like it's early access obviously it's going to have bugs yes that's what i'm telling you i'm telling you to make your decision based on the information we've been able to draw based on the different things that the director has said and bounced around oh first they're going to have quests and they're not going to have quests then the quests are involved and the quests aren't involved they're just trying to hype you up get hyped 
by all means, if they pull this off, this game is going to be the be all end all MMOs. Trust me on that. If they pull it off and I have a feeling they may come really close to pulling it off, if not pull it off. But I guess what I'm trying to say is I just don't want to see a lot of people buying it and then being disappointed. So manage your expectations, know what you're getting into. And then if, if you're OK with, you know, the game being at the state that it is and when you watch your favorite YouTuber or streamer play it then by all means, support the game. That's pretty much all I have for this one. Uh, I want to leave you with, I won't be streaming this day one, unfortunately, due to them delaying the game. I am going to be on vacation during that time. It was already planned out. There's nothing I can do. I will not be home. One, as soon as I get back and I will be back on the 22nd, I'm going to jump right into it. I will be streaming all day the 23rd so if you want to stop by check that out i'll be streaming all day i'm going to have an absolute astronomical amount of content on this game but with that said i'm going to wrap it up there so that's going to wrap it up for this episode if you like what you saw consider hitting that sub button i want to give a big thank you to my patrons for making this episode possible you all are absolutely amazing people if you would like to join my elite crew of patreon supporters please check out the link in the description below if you enjoyed this video please leave a comment down below let me know what you thought if you're shy you don't like to comment just hit that thumbs up button and show your support until next time Thanks for watching.